Alright, in this video we are going to talk about the angiography, angioplasty and coronary artery bypass grafting. This video is prepared for the second round of Elsevier. We are going to start with the angiography and here we are concerned about the coronary circulation. As the time progresses, the artery may undergo deposition of fat, cholesterol as well as calcium ions which may result in the formation of plaques which narrows the lumen of the artery. These plaques grow and result in the formation of what is called as atherosclerosis. As the time progresses, this plaque grows and may undergo some time rupturation which results in blood clot which may precipitate angina or chest pain and these may sometimes get detached to form mobile metastatic plugs. A puncture at the wrist or groin is done with the application of local anesthesia and a rubber tube called catheter is guided towards the coronary circulation. When it reaches the coronary circulation, a dye is introduced and series of X-ray photographs are taken in the form of film so that a surgeon can find the site of blockage. Once the surgeon finds the site of blockage, further treatment of the patients can be done. Next, we are going to talk about the angioplasty. Angios means vessel and plasty means to mold. Here, similarly, a guide wire is introduced in the groin. First of all, a puncture is done in the groin or wrist with the application of local anesthesia. And a guide wire along with the balloon catheter is guided towards the coronary vessels where a blockage is found. Once the blockage site is identified, then a balloon catheter is inflated and deflated one or two times until the artery is completely free from obstruction. Sometimes a metal scaffolding called stent is introduced so that the artery cannot collapse again or may under not go stenosis. Sometimes these stents are medicated so that the artery lumen remain open so that a free flow of blood is maintained and heart works properly. In the next, we are going to dis discuss about the coronary artery bypass grafting. In this first, the area of the mediastinum is first of all scrubbed with the scrubbing soap and sometimes it is shaved off and 6 to 8 inches incision is made along the side of the sternum and sternum bone is spreaded apart and pericardial cavity is also open to expose and examine the heart. At this point a surgeon should find a graft for the bypass and these are mainly from membrary artery which is also called internal thoracic artery or from the vein of the leg which sometimes or mainly the cephanous vein or sometimes the arteries of the arm which are the radial arteries. These graphs are taken and examined well before planning a bypass. Then a heart is undergone a high doses of heparin given to make sure that the blood does not clot and then a heart lung bypass machine with the help of plastic stents is introduced into the heart so that the blood bypasses the heart as well as lung but the blood does reaches to the entire body to maintain the proper functioning of the body next then the graft is selected and a blockage site is found then the graft is implanted below the blockage site and to the aorta. So if we take the graft, we have found the blockage site, we have to plant the graft one side to the aorta and one side below the side of the blockage. And then depending upon the time of, of the patient, heart lung bypass machine is then removed so that the patient heart can work properly and can be examined properly whenever it is in the open heart position. Then again the reverse of the procedure goes on 
the sutures of the bone takes place and the pericardial cavity is closed and a tape is introduced inside there to maintain the pumping of the heart. This was about the video. Thanks for watching.